The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews were complaining to each other about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. Surely this is Jesus, son of Joseph, they said. We know his father and mother. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus said in reply, Stop complaining to each other. No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will, be all, will all be taught by God, and to hear the teaching of the Father, and learn from it. It comes to know to me. Not that anybody has seen the Father, except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert, and they are dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have any of us experienced this situation where we get up one day, or throughout the course of our day, this, this, this thought popped up in the head. That's it. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Now, I'm not talking about physical or emotional tiredness. No, we are, we, we are physically tired, we can rest. Emotionally tired, we can try to relax, you know, do something to relax our mind or our emotions. But somehow, there is kind of tiredness where we say, enough is enough. I really can't do this anymore. I think perhaps some of us may have gone through this kind of experience, and more so for those who serve in the church. Because in our family, we do what we can. Because if we really love our family, we will not suffer from that. But in the church, in ministry, we may experience that. But of course, speaking from a personal experience, yes, I also came to that point several times in my ministry before I became a priest where I told myself, enough is enough. And yet, ironically, I still carried on. So, what or how did that happen? Or how did that happen? And how come we choose to continue? If we look at the prophet Elijah, the first reading, he says, says the same thing, that's it, I'm done, I'm tired, just take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Just, just finish it. We know Elijah to be the model of all the prophets. You know, he's zealous for the Lord. And he's the only prophet who was taken up into heaven without dying by a chariot of fire. The only prophet. So why is he accorded this kind of privilege? Because of among all the prophets, he did a lot. And he suffered a lot of persecution. Not just because of his words, because of his actions. We know from the book of Kings that he had a lot of alter altercations with Jezebel and King Ahab. You know, he killed all the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, destroyed all the Baal religion in the country, restored the religion of the Israelites. And yet, because the king and queen, they were not happy with him, so they kept persecuting him. Which is why it come to a point where he said, enough. I know better than my ancestors. Why? It's because no matter what he did, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Same with all these ancestors. You go about the patriarchs, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all this. They did so many things. And yet, did it make a difference? Yes, for a while. But after that, people reverted back to their ways. And it happens with all the prophets. It happens even now. We do so many things. We serve in the church. We serve in ministries. 
hoping that something good will come out of it. And yet, nothing changes. Or so it seems. On the physical side, yes. On the surface side, nothing changes. But on the level of the soul, on the spiritual realm, we will never know. Because what we do, what we say, may touch someone's lives, may help that person who was on the brink of despair to bring them back. And we will never know because most of the time, we will never be told that what we did was good for someone. But that is precisely how we should live. It's like what Jesus says, you know, the left hand should not know what the right hand is doing. Because if we know, then pride will come in. But how do we sustain ourselves in this cycle of, I wouldn't say hamster on a wheel, but it will seem like a hamster on a wheel. Tired, eat, sleep, drink, go on a wheel again. So it's just an endless cycle of running on the wheel. How do we sustain ourselves? You look at Elijah, tired, lie down. We're just hoping to lie down and then don't, don't wake up again. But the angels came to fed him. Because we know the angel didn't go to a bread shop and just say, I want, I want a piece of bread and bring some water and buy for him. It's a special kind of bread. In Latin, we call it panis angelicus, the bread of angels. And that is the one that the Israelites had in the desert, that mana that comes from heaven. And we see the effect of two meals, just two meals of bread and water. He can walk 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. So clearly it is not a normal piece of bread. It's a divine bread. And this is the bread that Jesus refers to in the gospel today. The bread of life. The Israelites tell him, our fathers ate manna in the desert. Moses gave us that bread. That was last week's reading. That Jesus said, no, it wasn't Moses who gave you the bread. Clearly, if you read it, it's not Moses. Moses is interceded for the people. And bread came down from heaven. So, the problem is, we forget who gives the gift. We focus so much on the gift that we forget the giver. And this is precisely what happened to the people of Israel until the time of Jesus, or up to the time of Jesus. Because they only think of the thing that they got. But they never thought of who gave it to them. Yes, they say Moses gave us that bread, but how did Moses produce the bread? He got kilang in the desert. Ah. Don't have one. So he had to come from somewhere. But they, never, they were not able to go beyond what is on the surface. And this is why Jesus is so frustrated with them. And he says, your ancestors ate manna in the desert but they are dead. Elijah ate the bread of heaven. Where is he? He's alive. In the readings of the Transfiguration, he appeared together with Moses side by side, showing that he is in heaven alive. His soul is alive. So this is what Jesus meant to say to the people, look, this kind of bread you eat, you physically die, but your soul lives on. So this is the one that nourishes us in our daily life to nourish our soul. The reason why we are so tired sometimes we want to give up in ministry because our soul is tired. It's not just our soul. Sometimes what affects our mind and our body affects the soul. And I mentioned this several times about us being the human person. We are made out of body, mind and soul. Whatever happens to one affects the other. If our mind is tired, our body is tired, it will affect the soul. Our minds and body, we can rest. But how do we rest the soul? We rest the soul by coming to God, to receive the bread of life. Because for us, many of us who have come for Mass regularly, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years even, sometimes we become apathetic. It's like, hmm, it's just a piece of bread. But is it really? Until we are able to change the way we see the Eucharist, we will always end up being tired by what we do. But if we are able to see the Eucharist as more than just a piece of wafer, we see it as the bread of life, then it can give nourishments to our soul. And with that, the soul will help to give strength to the body and the mind. And this is what we are here 
every Sunday to receive the bread of life so that we know by nourishing our souls, even when we pass on one day, our soul will live on and one day it will come to the kingdom of God. And so we pray for the grace to truly see the Eucharist for what it is, the bread of life, the bread of angels, that it will continue to nourish us. Now another side trivia, Jesus says he's the bread of life. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Okay. Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread. Beth is house, lehem is bread. It can also mean flesh, but in this context, we talk about house of bread. So being born in the house of bread, he himself becomes the bread that feeds the entire world. Something for us to think about. <laughs>